Either the way it's time to tighten your corsets, don your finest padded wig, and sharpen guillotines. Because I'm Flash Trasman, a woman of a woman of fashion, trying to survive the political turmoil, turmoil of the French Revolution. Come and join me while I gauge in gossip that can alter the course of history, or lead me to the gall- guillotine. Let's start. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was just had just made me made myself laugh. Pathetic, but anyway, right. I played a demo of this and it was fantastic. So thanks very much to the devs who have given me a key so I can show you guys a bit more because it's a fantastic game. Prologue of that story. The carriage rumbles and bounces along the cobbles as you approach Paris. It has taken over a week to get here, even carrying just yourself and your luggage. These dots mean there's more story ahead. Click anywhere in the text box to advance. Your fancy, Armand, arranged for the carriage to take you from your small village to a tavern he enjoys called the Orphan's Feast. There, he'll meet up with you. You'll likely take dinner together and then he'll show you your, to your new home in Paris. For now, though, you've, you've already finished all of your books and Armand's letter is, or is, our own, is your only entertainment, although they stand out of the window. So do we want to take in the sights? Read letter one more. Uh, do, 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 do. This voice is. Do, do, do. Uh, let's just read the letter. You read letter. You have read the brief letter over a hundred times, but you always find the new details to pull. New details to pull the puzzle over. Armand's letters are already extremely long. Often, we're often extremely long. Habit you frequently tease him for in your own missives. I apologise for butchering French. I can barely speak English with my own language. I've got no chance for the foreign language. So, I apologise for for butchering it. I I know it may be sudden, but I want I want to invite you to live with me in Paris. Back in your provincial old time, you were engaged to Armand before he moved north to Paris to participate in the Estate General. He dreamed of changing the country and. And this was a political event of the century. You mailed love letters soaked in perfume. He replied with volumes about how much he misses you. The romance of it all helped make up for the inconvenience. Not that your parents cared much about the romance. At first, you'd been afraid to tell them their youngest daughter wanted to move far away. Instead, they nearly threw you onto the carriage to follow on on to Paris. <laughs> I don't know what this is about me or my character or the parents. My parents' character, anyway. While you understand the significant benefits your common family would receive from your marriage into a noble one, you couldn't help but be a little annoyed at their eagerness to see you off. <laughs> oh, I forgot how much made this made me laugh. That's what I loved about the demo, because I, I it just had me in stitches. I can't, I can't wait for you to see it. It's unlike anything back home, a truly vital place where any anyone can be anything. Yet embrassy again. I apologise, Armand. That was something you were looking for—to a chance to be something more. After all, Baroness Yvette de Mabo has a certain ring to it. Coachman, can you pick up the pace, please? Let's take the in the sights. You crane your neck out of the window to peer past. It's even more than you imagined. The streets are right of colour and energy as people go about their days. Elegant persons of fashion strut like brilliant peacocks. Students stumble under the weight of their books. Beggars alternate between pleading for alms and shouting invectives at passers-by. Everything feels significant like the world's next act hinges on all of their choices. The part of you is ruled by your unfamiliar surroundings. You you mostly feel excited. This place is to, to be the stage of your new life. For you know it, the carriage starts to slow down. You must be here. I'm on the to meet you at a tavern named the Orphan's Feast. As tired and rumpled as you are, you're glad to be f- that he planned to meet you in a place with ample food and wine. When you arrive, the coachman's helped you out of the out of the carriage, and you find yourself outside a glowing, friendly-looking tavern. The, sh- the sign shows a grubby-looking child holding a plate piled high with fresh bread and rice meats. This must be the place here. Guess nothing. So, the choice for characterisation purposes. This will not act impact your paths and stats so basically it's a like a, it's a it's a it's a narrative storyteller which is kind of the same thing but it's a narrative because so basically your character develops 
develops by the choices you make. So what we're saying here, it doesn't matter what we say. Here goes nothing on this one. Inside a woman, polishing a lantern, looks up at you as you enter. Her face breaks into a brilliant smile. Bonjour, madame, and welcome to the orphan's feast. Her eyes linger expectantly on the door for a moment, but settle on you. You're suddenly, you, you're suddenly reminded of how rare it is for a woman to travel by themselves. How may I be serviced? This is my first time. Is anything I should know uh, to help me find my fiancé tutorial? Uh, yep, let's go with that one, basically. This is my first time here. Is there is anything I should know to help me find my fiancé? Don't worry, while the rest of the city can be rather cutthroat, the orphan's feast is a relaxed place for getting your feet getting your feet under you. The woman puts down the lantern as she, she was polishing. She favours you with a devious smile. Find guests worth talking to and try to say the right things to the right people. You'll never have time to talk to everyone, so try and use your time wisely. Ooh. I'm sure that if you ask around, you'll be able to find your fiancé in, fiance in no time. When she puts it that way, it suddenly sounds so easy. When you're only... While you only have one outfit to your name at the moment the office feast doesn't feel like a particularly judgmental place in terms of fashion your credibility won't be shifted by what you're wearing here because clothes matter as long as you explore the tavern and talk to people you should be able to find Armand soon enough Armand Armand so we've got this bloke here uh, this is a party map select the room to talk to with people there so we've got Two different people uh, do, 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 with this gentleman, this one. I don't like the look of him. Or this is this is the one we've just been speaking to. Uh, you spent long enough while in the discomfort of that carriage. Now you've got time to get something to drink. And if this is staff and you can find Armand. Potential rewards credibility peril return to the party so we've got well searching for my enhancing your man approaches you perhaps like to help got this but let's say we get credibility and peril so if we look up here yeah so more actions we take the more credibility we get also the more power we get so this is kind of an indicator we've got 100 we've got 100 lever lever leave her whatever it was hang on uh, I have no oh that's religious I think a fellow traveller sits at a nearby table having recently become acquainted with Paris himself perhaps he'd be able to point you so he's new to Paris so I'm thinking to myself fellow traveller no oh, hang on more to it that Alex Favour now what is that honourable favour so we can get a lot of stuff here just purely because I have no idea what that is let's go with this one He's a fellow traveller, so I don't know the reason why he'd know. However, uh, let's go with this one. Pick a conversation with a gentleman. You approach a man standing by himself. His wig is slightly dishevelled, and he has fresh mud on his boots. Enthusiastic traveller. Ah, bonjour, madame. You must have just arrived in Paris as well, he says affably. Where did you journey from? An idyllic farming town to the south. I'm a little sorry I left it behind. It was no less significant. I'm happy to be here. I'm actually looking for someone. Let's have a... I, don't worry, madame. I'm sure you'll be able to return there soon enough. He replies with a warm laugh. I myself came a few months ago from similar idyllic surroundings in Brittany. But of course, the harvest is obviously good this year, which is what brings me to Paris. I'm searching for a way to revitalise our estate back home. I tried new farming techniques, imported tools, and I even built a shrine to Saint Isidore himself, yet it is, was to no avail. So I'm here in search of a solution. Et voi, madame. Again, I apologise. You have brought... Uh, what has brought you to Paris so far from home? I'm here because my fancy Armand is here. I'd follow him anywhere. This is the only place where I can achieve the status I deserve. Paris is a hub of trade, wealth, classism. Let's go that one. You've travelled all the way for your fancy. Such love and devotion reminds me of when I was your age. His eyes have a far off look, look from him. Never let yourself lose sight of such things. If that is why you are here, you might want to seek out those associated with the church. Love and tradition are very much on their minds. You've gained a little favour with members of the church. Don't worry, we'll, we'll meet. They'll, you'll meet them later. Okay. So this amount of yours, what what brought him to Paris? No, uh, he's Baron de Marbo. He pauses, thinks, scratching his chin. Why does that name sound so familiar? 
His eyes go wide for a moment before settling into an expression of discomfort. Gathering up his things, he starts to prepare to leave. That doesn't sound good. I wonder. And I wonder if I don't know the answer. I'm not. I'm not giving spoilers away. But I wonder if older Armands had a had a date with Madame Guillotine. So my dad might simply have been here long enough to uh, enough to get to, uh, enough to know about him. But, uh, yeah, he knows something. He knows something. So let's go. He sighs and looks outside, like obviously torn on what to do. Getting close to your whispers. If you must know, madame, your fancy, ha fancy has made a powerful enemy. And if you don't know how he did that, then you might want to reconsider him entirely. Okay. Without another word, he drains his wine glass and leaves. While you may have learned something, you feel like you're still having more questions than answers. You should be able to clear all these things up when you find Armand. I don't think we're going to be finding Armand. Right, you have limited amount of turns to talk at each part. The conversation in the room always costs one turn, so choose wisely. Right, so we've got we've only got one choice. We're going to go with this pair, aren't we? Okay. Now you've uh, more climb climb acclimated, a climb yeah, sorry again. Don't, I just can't read today, which is a bit of a problem when you when you're playing a game that involves lots of reading. Uh, acclim acclimated to the guests and the travellers, the orphans VC should be able to find someone who can lead you to Armand. Right, with this pair. After hours of questioning and searching, it's late in the evening. You still have yet to find Armand. You're not even sure why, but you feel so exhausted. You feel exhausted. Who can you talk to people with such hard work? Now that you've warmed up this may be your chance to finally find where Armand is you approach a woman who is spotted glancing at you you're glancing your way earlier uh, uh, pardon pardon me have you seen Baron de Marbo to mention uh, at the mention of Armand's full touch she laughs nervously she makes small talk for a brief moment before excusing herself and disappearing to the crowd the room appears to be emptied and out a gentleman you remember seeing early walks by he might prove a little more useful uh, excuse me Let's go with that one. He looks at you, glances to the, over to the woman he spoke earlier, then quickens his pace and walks as he walks by. The room is emptying a fast now. You, you manage to get attention of another woman. A skip. She doesn't even sit down before she leaves. After a third person gives you the cold child, you start to wonder what happened. Are you really out of are you are you really that out of place? Is something is it something about Armand? What is going on here? I think it's something about our, our fiance people. Still you check around the office feast one last time. There's no sign of Armand, not even an open tab with a tavern keep. Oh dear. After waiting around for hours, you leave the orphan's feast, dragging your small mountain of luggage behind you. After all, the coach was only Hide to take you to the tavern. Armand may not have been waiting for you like he said he would, but you memorised his address from all the times you wrote it on your letters to him. It's in the middle of the night, but the street is still teeming with life. The light from windows and the street lamps sparkle like stars. You're tired and your feet hurt, but still you can't help but smile. This is it. This is Paris. No time. No matter what happens, you're still here. For a brief moment, you're not a country girl dragging luggage through the streets. You are, you're the person who you feel you are when you close your eyes. Well, sorry, we don't want again. You're the person you feel that you are when you close it. Close your eyes alone. Okay, not sure what to make of that. You're overseeing a great salon surrounded by poets, musicians, scientists, philosophers, and artists. You are elegant, sophisticated, and respected. You're getting close to the address. Armand never described his living conditions much, but he's a son of a baron and, and his family was always well to do, especially compared to yours. You spent a lot of time in that carriage wondering about about the home you sp you'll, you'd spend your new life in. Still, you didn't expect this. <laughs> Calling this house rustic would, would imply that you were out in the country, not in the centre of a city. The neighbourhood is nice enough. But you're worried that if you breathe too hard on the building, it will it'll fall over. <laughs> a well-cut woman in a tavern made open the door and approaches you. Ah, bonsoir. I assume you must be Madame Yvette. My, my name is Camille. Much what Amon told me to expect you. Merci, Camille. Please take me to Amon. I remember this from the demo and it made me laugh then. Is this where it is? Okay. 
Oh, just classic. I just forgot about this. Oh. Is this where we lose? Oh, God. The rats in there ate him, didn't they? Impossible damn I have taken care of all the rats myself. Camille replies, emphasizing her point with a playful stop of her foot. <laughs> Look at her face as well. I ain't going to warn you so you have a feeling the rats didn't go quietly. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, just that just makes me laugh. That's why I just, that's why I love the demo because that this this one whole conversation just had me in stitches. Fine, when I'm done with him, I'm, not, I'm on this going to wish the rats had eaten him. <laughs> oh, fantastic! At this, Camille takes a deep, nervous breath. I'm afraid to tell you that you'll have to wait, Madame. It's been days since I've seen my, uh, Monsieur Armand. I was hoping he was with you. While you're still precious in the latest disappointment, Camille seems to notice your mountain of luggage for the first time. Mon Dieu, madame! Did you go always by yourself? You must be exhausted. Look at her face. I love the art style as well. The art style's beautiful. Home sweet home. Look at this wreck. She's not wrong. You're, you're not certain how you're still up right and awake right now. I've already made up your bed, madame. Please go inside and let me take care of this. You take your diary and leave the heavy lifting to Camille. Inside the house is the inside of the house is much better than the outside. Camille keeps the place tidy, but but she can only do so much. Still, you don't care about that right now. You're just happy to have a roof of your head. You flop down on a nearby couch. Couch. Open your diary. Start to write. You're tired and disappointed, and perhaps abandoned. But writing things down always helps you make sense of this of a situation. Orphan's Feast, hosted by Baron. Okay, so after party report, the Orphan's Feast, hosted by Baron Emile Albon. Novelty lost. Okay. Bewars a, Lu a Ludovico favour. Okay. Oh, I, I don't know what that means, but <laughs> that's good. 21st Mars, 1789. Early the next morning, Camilla approaches you, occasionally ring, ringing her apron with her hands. She's obviously nervous. Madame, there's something you should know. Take it, taking a deep breath, she continues. You're expected to end a party the day after tomorrow, held by one Baron Max, Max, Maximin de Temes. I mean, Armand replied to the invitation, but you, uh, but you were to be his date. Do you know anything about this Baron Maximin? Maximin, Maximin, yeah. I'm so mad I don't know I don't know much. It would have been improper of me to pry into my short Armand's affairs. Uh Camille replies with a surprising earnestness. All I know is that Baron de is a very outspoken political type, always going on about constitutions and natural law. Monsieur Armand attended a lot of his saloons but never looked really looked happy when he came back from them. Okay. So we get the impression our, our husband to be don't like this fella. I don't need to remember that. Hope that helps, madame. Well, at least I have a party to go to. <laughs> uh, Camille looks visibly relieved. Poffet. Again, apologise. If you need anything washed or prepared, just ask. That reminds me, if you're going to a party, you should probably make sure you're dressed appropriately. Fashion moves so quickly here that people retire outfits but they've, before they've even, but they even wear out. At this proclamation, you can't help notice that Camille's uniform has been repaired many, many times. Camille continues, Monsieur Armand was always going through clothes so quickly. He said that every outfit had a certain amount of novelty. Every time you wore them to a party, the novelty would go down a bit. In fact, even a little thing like wearing the same thing twice in a row could run the, could run the novelty out faster. Can you imagine? That's what that novelty thing referred to in the previous one. Okay. Fortunately, he, he knew the most delightful uh, clothier on Rue de Faubourg saint Honor. Honor. She runs a shop called the uh, Le Petit Mogal. Mogal. I'll draw you some directions. Immediately she starts sketching some directions, mostly uh, simple renderings of land local landmarks. Le Petit Mogal is now available in to visit in the Paris map. If you head out today, you should be well prepared for the party tomorrow night. Okay. You've gained a level of exhaustion by you've gained a level of exhaustion by attending the party. 
Any levels of exhaustion that you have at the start of a party or rendezvous will give you penalty to your credibility. Were or not, you'll discover ways to reduce exhaustion. Okay. Explore pass. I just think I just love the art style. I really do. That's the point. So we're there now. Okay. Is it Mars? March? I don't know. Uh, points of interest shop current objective incident so we are so where are we that's points of that's the shop where are we on this map then can I move around the map no we can't so if I click on that then what a lovely map <laughs> that's a lovely little map that current object we're at the current objective so let's go to the a small shop run by fashion, fa dressmaker Fatima Shanna spend your day here to buy and sell wardrobe items visit the location It's a long walk to Rue de Fourberg Saint Honor, but the trek to the narrow street is worth it. Every block hums with a vibrant energy bursting with life. Porters and social climbers wind their way through the streets, festooned with brightly coloured parcels. Paris may be a city swimming in fashion and f uh, finery, but this is a, this is the, but this is the source. This street is home to all the major fashion houses in the country, and to Ro and to Rose Baton, personal dressmaker to the Queen herself. So I think this is. Contrary to what I said on, I think this is set at the start of the French Revolution. I can be, I did, my history's a bit sketchy on that. I have read a lot about it, but that's a very long time ago. Anyway, and now you're back here, back home. They sigh, and dream, they sigh and dream of places like this and quietly get back to their little lives. Not you. Your circumstances may be less than ideal, but you're still here. Le petit, le, le petit mogul. mogul. You mumble to yourself idly, trying to make sure you remember the name of the shop. Eventually, you find a small boutique tucked away between some far grander buildings. You open the door and walk into a tiny shop, which seems even smaller due to how absolutely full it is. This isn't just a boutique, it's a workshop for whoever works here. R rolls of gorgeous fabric cover every available surface. A cloying smoke hangs in the air. The scent is pleasant, but wholly unfamiliar. As the door swings shut behind you, you hear a sudden rustling of fabric further into the store. A customer! Hamdullah! A surprisingly young voice calls out. Bonjour, madame, and welcome to La Petite, petite Mogal. A woman, presumably only, calls out to you. How, how may I help you? She's very pretty. I do, again, I just love the art style. Uh, I have an important part to see in this amazing the tutorial. Let's go with the tutorial, just because yeah, it's there. All this is new. What can you tell me about outfits and fashion? At these words, she looks giddy to the point of bursting. She tries to play it off as a knowing smile. This deception is only half successful. Oh, I think I can help with that. I just <laughs> love the look on her face for that ridiculously long pipe. What's all that about? Anyway. Do, 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 do. Right. When, some, when one of my outfits... Select one of my lovely outfits to see if it is to your liking. Remember, my stock changes every day, so be sure to visit often. So, every faction in the game prefers different kinds of outfits. Dressing appropriately for the occasion makes people trust you more and increases your credibility. If you like it, press the purchase button. Bourgeoisie Revolution. That is revolution. Now I'm assuming that we've got to provincial dress, la robe for C. Right, I'm trying to remember what the guys, what they said about this part. Here we go. It says here. I don't have a question. This part has been held by the revolution. They like, they like robes. They like robes a la Francais. Sometimes they like robes de couture and humble crackers and skirts. So basically, so when you select an outfit, each outfit appeals to each particular faction to a certain degree. Now, this is telling us they like robes de Francais. Uh, Francais, Francais. Again, I apologise for butchering the French language. Sometimes they like robes de couture and humble... Uh, right, so... Let's look at this one. Bourgeois love it. Revolution don't. Revolution minus test. We can't go without them. They ate it. 
They're not like that one. Provincial dress is still like that one either. This is the obvious one. They're like this. Novelty value. The more reds, the more that goes down. Let's purchase this dress. We look, don't we look gorgeous? Confirm. Uh, you spent uh, some of your money. Levers are used to buy outfits, pay servants, and more. Try to make sure you always have some on hand. Yeah, don't want out of money, basically. 22nd Mars, 1789. You awaken to a vision of sunlight filtering through the shutters, scattering sunbeams across this dusty bedroom. It takes a few minutes before you groggily remember the events that brought you here. You also remember that tonight you were at a party to attend. Camille enters your bedroom already full of cheer. Madame, when would you like to start getting ready? Uh, hmm. If this is important as an invitation makes it seem I should prepare now, not yet. Camille, I have some other things that I need to take care of today. I don't think I do though. Let's go with that one. Let's get ready. That's good to hear. These preparations always seem to take all day. One day, on days where you have a party, you won't have time to spend exploring Paris. Ah, you see. Once you go, once you go to your wardrobe, we we can get started. Yeah, let's go. Let's tutorial again. This, this is, uh, don't worry, madame. A glamorous woman like yourself is sure to catch on quickly. All right, so click here to go to the wardrobe. Go to the party. Okay. All right. So we've got a provincial outfit, which is that, or we've got that. Okay. So we've got a. Uh, my name. Uh, Maximin de Prem is private, so there's a humble slang concerning that ills are plague, plague in a great nation. We hope you should remember the event for years to come. Now that you have an outfit selected, you can go to the party. Right, okay, go to the party. Minus five for exhaust, we've got exhausted, so we've got minus five credibility, which is a bit because, because we don't have any credibility to start with. When your carriage drops you off at the party, you find yourself waiting in line for quite some time. Long at the other guests, you wonder if you, you're underdressed or overdressed. It's honestly, honestly hard to tell. You look, o you look over yourself one last time and confirm that you're wearing your robe a la France into a party held, uh, being held by the revolution, which is kind of what the said I should do. The guests have no strong feeling in your outfit. Your credibility hasn't changed that much. We've gained one credibility. Woohoo! With the preparation of that, it's a result, and that could be a toss up. While you're determining your stand in the world of fashion, you manage to overhear interesting rumour while in line. You make a mental note of it just in case. You have gained one piece of cheap revolution gossip, this will be useful later. Okay. Unfortunately, you can feel exhausted setting as soon as you think of the full itinerary ahead of you. Tonight is going to be a long night. Oh, and I've, I've now lost that credibility. Being exhausted has given you a credibility penalty. Okay. Immediately upon entering the vestibule, you're greeted by a doorman holding a small ledger. While he, has, while he isn't physically barring your entry, his man he certainly is. Uh, what do we... What do we do, 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 let's go with this one. There uh, looks perhaps... Uh, I don't see your name. Uh... I am bound I'm on de uh let's go with this one. Let's go with this one, look harder. He finds the irritation well for a moment, the doorman flicks back and forth between the pages of his ledger before he finds what he's looking for. Oh yes, you are the date to Baron de Marbart. If I remember you're his fancy no. He glanced at him expectantly and where where may I find the good Baron? He's taking a little bit instead uh That's a good question I wish I knew. The doorman eyes wide surprised that it's certainly not the sort of answer he was expecting. Oh my madam, what an unfortunate turn of events. You must be quite some sense that I can get you. Uh, uh, please convey my deepest gratitude to our host, and I am eager to meet him. Absolutely, madam. The Baron shall hear shall hear of it quite soon. You hear some murmurs from other guests in the vestibule. Gratitude and enthusiasm seem to have better pushed on them, though the doorman seems rather unfazed. credibility has gone up. Ooh. You have gained a little, a little credibility. Before you can ask other questions, he bows deeply to you. Pardonnez-moi, madame. Baron de, Terme, uh, Baron de Termes has instructed me specifically to inform, you as soon as, to inform him as soon as you had arrived. We've heard so much about you. Enjoy the party smiles before leaving. Okay, so we've got... 
so we've got your your firebind two guests looking uh someone else's uh looking for someone else at the event apparently a new revolution figure has moved in paris one that's winning quite a bit of favor among the more radical elements and tonight favor credibility okay so let's just return to party we've got in here we've got cardinal sinapeggio and someone are huddled together and speaking low voices about some scandalous event that took place in the countryside church gossip return to the party what we've got up here we have got a revolutionary host this woman is standing by herself seems quite um, fascinated by the host of the party mm. we can pick we can pick two let's pick let's go with this one two guests are looking for someone to do, do, do let's go with this one let's pick a conversation with this pair see how we go with that you spot two guests who are talking to each other but appear to have been on the lookout for someone else. Every few moments their conversation breaks off as they collectively glance around the room. Something about them feels tense. Is he even attending tonight, nationalist woman? I have no idea that we should be able to spot him quite easily. Keep on the lookout for a remarkably handsome young man with a charisma, a hatred for authority and a penchant for extreme violence. The man replies a little too loudly while he pretends to sip from a glass of wine. The woman stares at your at your at her friend incredulously. How exactly does one spot a penchant for extreme violence? <laughs> it's a very good point. Uh, examine the way others treat him. If they keep their distance, then that's your man. Well, that's certainly a good start. The woman admits making some room for you in the conversation. Are you looking for Monsieur Saint Just as well? Before you can answer, friend interrupts you. Of course she is. That maniac is the only person anyone here is talking about. A wry smile creeps across the woman's face as she pats her friend reassuringly in the arm. A maniac, surely. You're just exaggerating. I'm not. I can see that St. Just's a charismatic boy. Charismatic boy. That's mu that much is true. However, don't forget that he led a student revolution at his own university. He tried to put the whole school to the torch. I'm the... I'm, I'm all one for building alliances, but I don't think Maximus should have, should have invited him. The third estate, the third estate doesn't need people for don't need people like that. I'll do some digging around because again, I'd, I've read about the third revolution, and I can't remember. You've got the first, second, third, and fourth estate. I think isn't like I can't which is I might be wrong this, but I thought the first estate was like the church or the king. Basically, I think it's the you got the, the nobility, the church, the king, and the peasantry. The and spin to estates. I'll do some digging on it and let you know next on the next next time we come back on this. I'll have a look for myself. The woman grimaces. I've I haven't heard that part. What about you? Do you think it's right to invite Saint Just? Do do do. He's not an enemy. His willingness for violence lends to your lends to your rhetoric weight. Rhetoric weight. Of course, it was Saint Just is most revolutionary amongst us. Bloodshed only gets bloodshed. France needs civil reform, not civil war. Nodding, the older knight replies. So, you are saying that if we let Saint Just uh, let Saint Just to inform his own move to form his own move. We'd give the first and second estates an easy choice. They must either negotiate with our peaceful reforms or fight Saint Just uprising. Hmm. Yeah, I'll, 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 I shall have a look at the first, second, third estates because I can't remember what they are. I know it's some like church, nobility. Yeah, there's, I'll have a look anyway. He's doubt. He's doubtful. He doubtfully cocks his eyebrows and. And you and you can feel your point start to slip away. Then once we have won, we just convince the violent uprising to stop. Well, it sounds a lot better in your head when you, than it did out loud. You believe we want something about violent radicals like that just to make the crowd listen to us? Yet yeah, we, we we're able to convince our own violent humans to stop with just words. Both of these can't be true at the same time. The woman shakes her head. Oh dear. Oh great. And as as quickly as we gain the credibility, we lose it. After a few awkward attempts to restart the the two of them walk away, leaving you with your thoughts. It's a firm but few moments to collect yourself before rejoining the rest of the party. That didn't go well, did it? Here we go. I think we've got uh, Maxim, Maximin appears. A man dressed, dressed in sober clothes of revolution is marching towards you, stopping occasionally to shake hands with various like minded people. You can surmise that this is Baron de, Tem de Temes, the man who invited you and Mond here. Okay. Let's start this conversation then.
At the corner of our unit, a tall, thin man dressed in sober, serious colours. The way people are clustered around him, you get the feeling that he's quite important. He glances up from his court conversation, politely, politely excuses himself and approaches you. Look, there's his little revolutionary pin badger. Uh, you must be Madame Ducor. I'm not sure if a man spoke, spoke of me. I'm Baron Maximum de Temer's right, right as he focuses his attention on you, can feel everyone in the room watching you at the corner of their eyes. His opinion must carry a great deal of weight. But please let us dispense with titles. You may call me Maximin. That chuckles as they can't help but be surprised by this, his noble, this noble's informality. informality. This would be down at scandalous in other circles. The conversations in various corners of the room died down as people strained to hear your exchange with Maximin. It's great to meet the woman a man spoke of so much so spoke so much of. He said more about you than he did of the st than he did than he than he did the state of the nation. And you know he loves that he how you know he love, he loves that. Maxim smiled and offered you a knowing wink. Now that I've seen you I can I can see why he muddled his priorities ah he doesn't like me you gain a little credibility so let's so, so see how quickly we can lose that in fact you may you may you you may, you may both find this useful he grabs a jum a jumble stack of political pamphlets off his desk and hands them to you discourse moves so rapidly after all i would hate for you two to have any trouble keeping up a few voices mum uh, in the crowd murmur in approval Maxim pauses his eyes sweep them for a moment, but please, I must have troubled you with a question of my own. I'm telling him on his able journalist tonight. Why was it delayed? Who, uh. I'm sorry, but I'm on a stick and ill. Still, he said that I should just end the party. Actually, I don't know where. I'm, actually, I don't know. I don't even know where he is. Let's be honest. You've lost him. Your maximum. A sudden note of confusion mars his features, and you came here. With a flood of the lessons you last, but of course you're just you're you're just here at my salon to find your Armand. I thought you were here to enlighten and discourse, but no, this makes more sense. Your little Armand is commendable and exact sort of thing we're striving to bring to this troubled nation of ours. A small cheers are got from the crowd. Oh, we've got more credibility. Ooh, you've got a little bit more credibility. Of course it's a shame your loyalty is anchored to such a mediocrity, but still. If he's lost and it means we no longer have to entertain his traitorous ideas. If he's really cool, why did you invite him? Uh, uh, you don't know where he is, he is either then. <laughs> I don't know where he's skulked off to, nor am I inclined to find him. The only reason I invited him was to save myself time. Uh, the time of author got a pamphlet, pamphlet denouncing him. Maxim snorts. He and his regressive ideas of alternative action. In a time of such turmoil in our country, only decisive action has any meaning. To believe otherwise is to be a coward and a slave to the enemies of the people. And you, he continues, I don't need to investigate you further to know that you are cut from the same wretched cloth. Oh dear. The room is quiet enough to have a pin drop. You've lost some credibility. As quickly as we get it, we lose it. Maxim's voice drops like throat through a growl, growl bear, growl, barely above a whisper. Before you speak, I already know that what you're thinking, that somehow you don't deserve this. You are wrong. Our associations reflect our character, and you have chosen to associate yourself with a dangerous, dangerous boar who drags at the heels of true progress in France. I can only assume that you are a craven opportunist who thought that marrying into a title would pr provide an easy path above, above her peers, that your life would be easier if you found the right person to latch on to. God, I don't like this bloke. Like a barnacle or a leech. You are a fool for believing that. And he's a fool for loving you. I've got, I've got no more credibility to lose, mate. Titles don't elevate ele elevators above consequences. Now leave my house and never return. Gladly. Before you can reply, Valet grabs you roughly by and drags you from the study. People... Uh, like your Lotham host don't need to do and d don't need to do their own dirty work. They have servants for it. It takes far longer than you'd like to get outside. As the entry is crowded, your guests prefer to leave. You can feel the eyes weighing heavily upon you. When you finally get to the door, you can feel the brutish shove and you stumble into the courtyard, barely keeping your balance in your the balance in your heels. The air is equally crowded and the various persons entering their personal carriages. You can hear someone snicker, you but you have no idea who who it was. Do, do, do. The only thing left to do is go home. Sigh. 
this has been a night I'll just leave yeah choosing to set the high ground you straighten your posture hold your breath high stride towards your carriage as if it was your intention to leave like this all along while making a great effort to heartily avoid eye contact with all those watching you you can tell that someone some of them are quite surprised by your decorum in this dire situation yeah you gain some credibility however you knew I have the place your carriage is parked you could find it isn't there and that it isn't <laughs> yeah it's gone you check to make sure that you're in the right place but no other carriages you hide is simply not there he went home the passing coachman said helpfully while adjusting his harness and a particularly grumpy horseman your dorm doorman came out about an hour ago and told him you wanted the coach to leave without you he seemed the real importance so he went home for you can leave his bond he gets in his carriage moving leave you alone with it yet another with yet, with yet another indignity going back to maximum is obviously unacceptable it's too far to walk home and most of the guests have already left. However, there appears to be a few carriages waiting for you to leave. Each of them is quite different. Perhaps one of them can help. Uh, let's the humble carriage. The carriage left you is of a forgot foreign design and features a gilded crest as the only orna ornamentation. This crest is emblazoned with a motto in Latin and it appears to belong to a priest of some description. The curtains are drawn but someone appears to have a little, little, little lantern inside. Judging by the document's letter, it looks like he's reading. You consider the homocarriage for a moment. This Is this who you like to ride with? A priest should be willing to help a poor innocent woman like, like myself. Let's go! Yeah, let's go. Settle, settle in your decision you set out. Ready to entrust your fortunes to a modest stranger. You reach out and knock on the door of the carriage. The silhouetted, fi the silhouetted, silhouetted figure jumps in surprise. An accented voice calls out to you. Huh, who is this? Father, my name is... Uh, it's me, the woman who just got cascaded by the host and then thrown out. My name is Yvette Decor. I am a common woman in need. In need. Oh, my, the voice calls out after some formally... He parts the curtains of the carriage windows. Hello, Madame Decor. Do not worry. I'm sure there's something I can do for you. I may help my trouble for a ride. My coachman was tricked into leaving without me. Be pretty humbled. For the first time today, you see someone look at you with genuine concern. How terrible. Please come aboard. As it is no trouble. Put on his book and wave you inside. The, the inside of the carriage is very similar to the outside. It's simple but lovingly crafted. Father Sidotti sits across from you, his eyes darting between you and the small stack of books on the seat next to him. He signals the coachman by tapping the ceiling of the carriage and heads off heads off towards Paris. He stays out for a while and almost starts talking before think better of it. This person repeats it a few more times before he finally speaks. We ask what happened. The pace prizes are quite a different way of entertaining their podcasts. Uh imagine sits it past him but with insults instead of arrows. <laughs> The priest, the, the priest laughs out loudly. I must be very fortunate to have, to have a martyr in my presence. I'm glad to see you made it without any extra holes in you. <laughs> oh, we've got... Uh, you've gained some favours with the Ludovicio. <coughs> Excuse me. After a few more giggles, his face turns and says, I heard that you were searching for your fiancé and that your host thought it would be good to spot to ridicule in front of your friends. Utterly barbaric. He follows this up by muttering something decidedly unchristian to himself in Italian. Are you alright? I get an impression you're not from Paris. What brings you here? Let's have a conversation with him. You're right, I was born and raised in Rome. My family is about to trishal as it comes. So when my parents had three sons, they knew what to do and with us immediately. One man of arms, one man of letters and one he just bought himself a man of the cloth. The sem seminary wasn't bad, it was the first time in my life that people were happy that I spent all my time reading. I was ordained a few years ago and shuffled around to help various parishes in Rome. All the older priests liked me because I didn't talk too much. He blushes for a moment and stares at the window, though that, hold that, holding, that made holding mass a little more difficult for me. A lot of awkward silences. A few months ago I was pulled aside and told I would be sent to Paris as there has been a lot of unrest here my superiors in Rome what an outside opinion he pauses for a moment to fiddle with his rosary you see sending a bishop or cardinal here with all their retinue would have asked too much suspicion it would make people think something bad's going to happen a single priest nobody notices that so I didn't mean to bore you with my life story I ramble when I'm nervous it's fine I thought it was interesting really he coughs awkward and looks where you're too kind madam Ooh, 
more favour, you get a little favour, more favour with Ludo Vicow. What about you? Uh, I honestly have to. Oh, I'll be alright, yeah. But it's just good he was trailing off a moment just to make sure you give yourself time to rest, even most managers can wear on the soul if left uncared for. In case you start to pace for the rest of the cards you had, most of your free time growing up was spent reading and ignoring your parents, so you both seem to have a lot in common. When this evening started you didn't have to expect to find yourself didn't expect to find yourself in a carriage discussing Voltaire and Goth with a Catholic priest. The carriage rolls to a stop cutting it cut him off from his centres. Here the crunch hobnail boots on the cobblestones as a coachman walks to the door. For, for other, but Father Sed, Father Sedotti opens it first. He steps down and offers you your hand. This has been a rare pleasure, madame. And as he steps into the street. You gained even more favours. Hopefully we'll meet again. Uh, we'll meet again on the back. Thank you. Until we meet again, are you sure? Yes. Uh, are you sure? I can always make more enemies if you'd like. Uh, let's go that one. The nod. Ludovico steps into his carriage and disappears into the night. You return home to find Camilla's already here, holding the door open for you. How was it? Who who was that? Uh, a most intriguing young priest. Hopefully, someone I'll uh, I'll see again. Hmm. Your mind boom with new possibilities. You step aside and head upstairs. Slowly, you get undressed. Open your journal and record what happened, what transpired tonight. Let's have a look. So, a dress has lost one novelty. A book, cheap only got a book that was recently arrested for printing profane criticism of the royal family. It is it is punishment for vulgar slander or repression necessary criticism. We've got nine. We've got credit, but we look. We've got five favors. Okay, so continue. Chapter one: Establishing yourself. Twenty-three Mars, seventeen eighty-nine. On that call, I think it's time to leave it here. So I think we'll save the game here. That was quite an entertaining first forty-five minutes. I just absolutely love the demo. The demo played it start the start of the year, and I thought it was fantastic. And it made me laugh a lot, as you can tell now. So I'm looking forward to playing more of this game. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you tried it yourself. And, yeah, like I said, I'm with a game like this, I'm always intrigued to know if it's somebody else's... Well, other people have played it, they've taken... <coughs> Of taking different options, so I always can see what direction the games go depending on which option you take. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. Listen to me laugh righteously because it's just it just makes me laugh. It's going to appeal to my sense of humour. I love the art style, I do love the art, I love the dialogue. Obviously, my homework for me is to go back and refresh my mind on the third, second, and third states are. Hopefully, I'll remember to do that and tell you in the next episode. If I don't, put it in the comments. Remind, remind me in the comments to tell you what the first, second, third states Or if you know yourself, you tell me what it is. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble. When I ramble and waffle, it's time to stop. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that, and I shall see you in the next one. Thanks very much. Bye.